Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being with us today. I'm going to give you a 30,000 foot overview of the work that we have been doing for a very long time. And then as you have specific questions, I have Detective Hermelbrock here. He was one of the detectives that brought all of these cases together, a lot of these cases together. There's two or three different operations. And he'll be able to drill down a little bit and give you some details. But I want to tell you that our concern started July 17, 2019. Dartavius Outsey drowned. This young man was 16 years of age, and he was given an appropriate burial by his family and friends. And guess what happened? Some gang members disrespected his grave. They danced on it. They took videos. They posted it. And as you can imagine, that would set us all on fire. It certainly set his brothers and friends on fire and a huge conflict began. And I give that July 17, 2019 date as, as be, the beginning, and I'm going to read through some of the timelines after that, and then I'll introduce my colleagues to you. So beginning in 2019, there is rumblings among the different street gangs, and most of them are the kid, what I call the kid gangs, the, the younger group. They're, they're in their teens and early 20s. Where we started an investigation in 2019 against a nationwide gang. Now, normally I don't use their names. I've already done a press conference on this, but it was the Sex Money Murder Gang. This investigation began and ultimately, we ran it between 2019 and 2022, and it culminated in what we call a T3, or a communication ordered intercept by the courts. We made 41 arrests in that particular operation. And during those, those 41 arrests, we arrested the entire hierarchy of the gang in the state of Florida. The president, the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer, we also arrested the president of the North Carolina chapter. So we decimated that gang, and we were very proud of that work. And we saw a lot of their gang activity diminish. We also still to this day see a lot of conflict that is occurring between the gang as they try to, to restructure. But still, with that magnificent investigation by our detectives, and you see the organizational chart over here to my right, the gangs went on. In 2020, we had six drive-by shootings, and that's a low number for the entire county. We credited a lot of the work that was ongoing at that time into the Sex Money Murder Gang as a reduction. During 2020, we also did another T3, or an intercept in, in investigation, called Operation Hotwire. Now, why did all of this occur? Because we saw this bubbling up, and we heard the chatter in the streets. In 2021, we went from 20 sh drive-by shootings in, to 16. And then during that year, when we went to 16, Daron Outsey was killed. Okay, this is Daron. He's only 20 years old. He was shot and killed. And he was in this vehicle, in this drive-by. They left the bowling alley in Winter Haven and had a running gun battle up and down the road all the way into Florence Villa. That was worked by us and the Winter Haven Police Department together. It started in the city. As soon as they left the parking lot, it ended up in the county, and ultimately we worked that. Now let's progress. In 2022, we jumped to 63 drive-bys and gang shooting. And in that year, Ira Footman was killed. Okay, I'm sorry. Ira Footman was killed in this car. Darren Outsey was killed in Haines City. There was an arrest made in the murder of Outsey, and of course, we made the arrest of Footman. Footman was shot up in this particular car. 
still the event went on. In 2022, on one night in the Lake Wells area, in the unincorporated area, there was two drive-by shootings. Those two drive-by shootings occurred, one on Laura Road, and a 19-year-old young lady was shot. And you go, well, what was she doing out late at night? Well, she wasn't out late at night. She was in her house. And then a few minutes later, there was another drive-by shooting where a 12- and a 14-year-old girl were shot. And that 12- and 14-year-old girl were shot. And you go, my goodness, what are they doing out? Well, they weren't out. They were in bed. And had they been sleeping traditionally in the bed with their head up at the headboard in, you can see this particular picture, Certainly one of them would have been shot in the head and there would have been a murder, but they happened to be sleeping sideways in the bed. So when the bullet came through, it hit them in the lower extremities and they survived. That was a gift from God. But the interesting thing about that particular shooting is those folks in that house had nothing to do with the gang. They meant to shoot up the house next to that house, but they didn't. They ended up shooting up the wrong house to get back at a gangbanger. So in 2023, between January and July, we had 32 gang shootings. In the, these shootings were not only in the cities of Haines City and Winter Haven, uh, the unincorporated area. The police departments are working their investigations and coordinating with us. We're working our investigations. But at that particular time, I met with my colleagues from the churches, and, and two of the representatives are here today. The vice president of the Ministerial Alliance for Polk County, Pastor Johnson, Curtis Johnson is with us, and also Minister Irvin Mahoney. They're going to speak with you in a minute. They were among those that we met with first. And I said, gentlemen, I need your support. We've heard you and we've heard from you because the community saying we're, you know we had a grandmother's house shot up in Winter Haven in the city of Winter Haven when a grandmother can't sleep peacefully at night because she catches an errant bullet that's over the top I work for these gentlemen as well as the rest of the people of Polk County and when they said sheriff we need to step, step it up. And even though they were cognizant of, and we had been working hard doing T3s, what we found, we were getting the more organized folks, the older folks, but we weren't getting these kids that were running and gunning. And as I said at the time, we are not going to allow kids to shoot kids. We're not going to allow kids to kill kids. So as they met with the ministers, and they were not only totally supportive, but then they said this, we'd like for you to report back to us. So the investigation goes on. We created a gang task force, and we talked about that. Every police agency in the county joined with us at the gang task force. FDLE put resources to it. Our Attorney General Pam Bondi also the U.S. Attorney's Office. We all work together in order to deal with this running and gunning. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I can tell you that we hear that, oh, these are just kids. They're 16, they're 17, they're 18, they're 19. I want you to, I want you to see something here. When, when all of a sudden... You, you have this kind of gun pointed in your face by a teenager, and you go, how did they even get this gun? They're not allowed to even possess it. But they were running and gunning and shooting. But that's not all. If these guns aren't cool enough, here's another gun that we see. This is a Glock. It's got an extended mag, but it's also got this. It's called a switch. This is a fully automatic handgun. 
because of this switch. Now this is an older model switch. If you can afford the newer model switch, you cannot tell that there's a switch here at all until you take the firearm apart. And this is what these kids are shooting at each other with. Our deputy seized 57 guns, and there's a group of the guns there that they've seized. I also would like to point out, as you see these silhouettes, those are folks that were innocent victims. They had nothing to do with the shooting, but they just happened to be there. So the, the investigation went on. You're going to hear from Detective Hermelbrock in a minute. We centralized all these investigations. And Detective Hermelbrock did a remarkable job, and he is the one that put this together. It was called Operation Drive Bye-Bye. And we certainly weren't going to allow Operation Bye-Bye to occur. So now, the investigation is ongoing. We have several different operations underway. And the results were this. Between February 2023 and August 2024, we've seen a 30% reduction in the gang shootings from the previous 18 months. We've seen 45% less gang drive-by shootings than in the previous 18 months. We made a total of 144 arrests with a gang task force. But I want to pause here. If you don't think we have a forgiving criminal justice system, listen to this. Of the 144 arrests we made, they had a total of 1,599 previous arrests. Let me say that again. The 144 who we have arrested again already had a prior 1,599 arrests. And when they not only had this 1,599 arrest, that amounted to 2,835 criminal charges. That was before they were arrested in these operations. And only 67 of the 144 had been previously adjudicated of a felony. Their charges had been dropped to misdemeanors, or maybe some of them had been no billed or null prost, and you go, my goodness, how's that happen? I can tell you how it happens. When somebody sticks one of these guns in your face and goes, you really don't want to testify against me, do you? Oh, no, sir, I don't. And you don't want to tell anybody I've threatened you, do you? Because, you know, if you send me to jail, my brother here will be back. So sometimes when we see these charges go away, it's because the state attorney's not left with any witnesses. I can tell you clearly and unequivocally that a lot of this activity you see is on the east side of the county, but we also saw a reduction of drive-by and gang shootings in the west side of the county, the Lakeland area. We saw that reduced by about 64% during this time. I want to share this with those that are watching today. There's more arrest to come. I'm not here today reporting the end of this operation. I'm here reporting back. I met with the Ministerial Alliance last night, and I gave them a report to the community. I call it a report to my bosses. And I told them what all we had done, and I thank them for not only supporting us, and you'll hear from them but requesting that we make sure every neighborhood in the county is safe. Our crime is at a 50-year low. So let me put this in perspective. This is really a small number of people shooting up each other and tormenting each other. And a lot of times they didn't call, they didn't want to be a victim, they didn't want to be a witness, and we had to dig these victims and witnesses out. And that's why some of this occurred because and it was 
figured out because of the work we did. But before I get to, to the chief and then my, my colleagues from the community here, I want Detective Hermerbrock just to give you a brief overview of what he did because he took events from all over the county, brought them together, figured out the timeline. So he's going to give you a brief, a brief understanding of, of what he did to bring all of this together. And, and I believe it's safe to say the overwhelming majority, if not all of them, that have criminal charges pending are still locked up in jail. That's another reason this year we've seen our shootings go down because it may come as a shock to some people who want to hug a thug, but when you're locked up in jail, you're not shooting up kids in the neighborhood. When you're locked up in jail, you're not robbing people. When you're locked up in jail, you're not shooting into little old ladies' houses. When you're locked up in jail, you're not murdering people. So, uh, Detective, come talk to him for just a minute. Thank you, Sheriff Judd. Good afternoon. My name is Detective Hermel Brock with the Major Crimes Division. On July 5th of 2023, I began a drive-by shooting investigation in unincorporated Winter Haven. During this investigation, two residences were shot, and we determined that the target location was a known gang member's residence. Just to be clear, this residence has been shot at four times within the past two years, reference to gang retaliation and gang violence. Unfortunately, as I said, two residences were shot. The intended target's neighbor, unfortunately, their house was also shot with an elderly couple asleep inside. From that investigation, I was able to link, as the sheriff said, working with Winter Haven, Haines City, and district detectives, to link five other drive-by shootings in relation to gang violence. In a lot of these shootings, automatic weapons were used, as the sheriff said. These are illegally altered firearms, making them fully automatic. They are able to shoot a rapid number of rounds in a very short period of time. From that investigation, we were able to also solve other violent crimes to include possession of the machine gun, armed burglaries, grand thefts, carjackings throughout this uh, from 2022 up until the current time. Let it be known that these gang members did target other gang members, but unfortunately, three innocent people were shot during this violence. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chief. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vance Monroe, Deputy Chief of Winter Haven Police Department. I'm just here to say I am thankful for the leadership of the sheriff's office and the sheriff um, for bringing this task force together. We can look around this room and see the results of their efforts. But what you can't see here around the room are the young men and women whose lives were changed, who are not taking that path. That's why it's important that these partnerships continue. This is just strengthening our resolve at the Winter Haven Police Department to continue with these partnerships and this task force. And Sheriff, once again, thank you very much for your uh, leadership in this area. Thank you, sir. Okay, now we're going to ask our Vice President, Curtis Johnson, to come up here and speak with us. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, I'm the vice president of the Polk County Ministerial Alliance, and I came to support our great sheriff in this endeavor uh, because it's not only one community, it's all of our communities. And I think that we must band together as a church. And this is why the Polk County Alliance have met with the sheriff on more than one occasion. And we believe together we stand, divided we'll fall. And we are not going to back down with crying. Thank you. 
Thank you, Pastor. And we have Minister Irvin Mahoney. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Minister Irvin Mahoney of the Parkview Christian Life Center in Haines City, Florida, where Pastor Henry L. Babers is my pastor. I am one. I wasn't one of those guys, but I have a testimony that these guys in the early 1990s, they changed my life, and they changed my life forever. And they took me to jail, and they talked to me, and they told me things about my life that I wasn't doing right. Uh, Officer Riley carried me to jail. He knew my family. Officer Riley knew my, the Mossby family. My uncle is the uh, big uh, city commissioner in Lake Alfred. But Officer Riley carried me to jail in 1990. He went by McDonald's on 6th Street, Grady, and he bought two Big Mike hamburgers and french fries. Y'all know Officer Riley. And I was handcuffed in the back. I said, well, maybe Officer Riley going to feed me a little bit before I get to the jail and get locked up. But Officer Riley stopped beside the road before he transported me. <laughs> And he ate both of those hamburgers and all those french fries, and he didn't give me a drink of the Coke. And that right there was one thing. But then when I went in the courtroom, Miss Frazier was in the courtroom, and she said, you come from one of the best families in, in Florida. Why are you doing what you're doing? So that began to, while I was in Orange and, and stuff in the early 1990s, changed my life. And now I have an organization that I mentor with in, in um, Detroit, but we're going to bring that organization to Florida, and I want to be deputized here in Polk County like I've been deputized in Michigan. we got an organization in Michigan called Come Out, Stay Out, Bishop T.D. Holden, and we got the sheriff up there, Chris Swanson, in Flint, Michigan, who are partnering with the jails. We had Jelly Roll. One of the, we got guys who have ex-offenders who have made mistakes in life, and now they are got they, their husbands, they've got families, their grandfathers, and they're living a different life. And there was an old saying that says, if you can't beat them, join them. I got a job with Polk County some 15, 16 years ago, at the, and nobody would hire me but the landfill. But um, Mr. Palmback, Larry Palmback hired me. Kim Byers was assistant director at the landfill before Ms. Arnold Woods came in. But they gave me an opportunity. And I saw then that I had a chance. And then, Mr. Grady, I began to work for the I worked for the guys that was on probation, and they sent me one day to pick up 13 guys from the jailhouse one Saturday, and I realized that I have a rose, that I'm not the same gangbanger, I'm not the same cocaine addict that I used to be before 1990 because of these men arresting me and because of, because of Officer Riley eating those two Big Mike burgers in front of me and carried me to jail and I was hungry. But it changed my life. And now I have a book out that's called I Left the Jailhouse on my way to the crack house, but I stopped by the church house. I partnered with Michigan, but I want to partner with Polk County right here. I'm a minister. I'm preaching funerals of young men going out, coming back from jail and prison, getting on fentanyl, and they're, and they're dead. And we got organizations in Detroit, whereas we got Arcans, and we got things that we're trying to make a difference in Saginaw, Lansing, and Detroit, Michigan. But I live here in Polk County. My main objective, Mr. Grady, I'm going to join forces with you. The church is going to join forces with you, and we're going to stop this gun violence. We're going to stop this th stuff that's going on in this great community, Polk County. Thank you, Minister. And that's one more example that it's not just the arrest, it's the aftercare. Now, these three young men here that I pointed out, Demetrius was 16 when he was stabbed to death inside the Publix on 6th Street in Winter Haven, and the Winter Haven police made an arrest. Ira was 22, and Iran was 20. They don't get to grow up. They don't get to grow up because people had guns. And I, I want to say this one more time. This menacing gun was taken off of a 15-year-old boy. Now, can you imagine a 15-year-old boy running with a gang and how dangerous that is? That, that's what our law enforcement officers are facing every night in order to keep the community safe. So crimes at a 50-year low, we're, we're thankful for that. 
but I pray every night for the men and women in law enforcement as we're going to make a positive difference. And these folks that think they're going to run and gun and get away with it, they're wrong. They're super wrong. I'm going to send them to prison for a very, very long time just as soon as our prosecutor, Brian Haas, who's the best, gets a conviction. He's all in on this with us, and he has vowed to stand shoulder to shoulder with us and make sure that we don't allow this community, as it continues to grow by 100,000 people in the last four years, to become the next Detroit or Chicago or L.A. Okay? Are there any questions for any of the team here? Sheriff, your youngest arrest is a 15 or 16-year-old. Has your investigation revealed how they are being recruited? And also, are there any intervention measures before they even enter a unit? Sure. Uh, a lot of this is communication now is social media. They, like everyone else, are on social media. They're making their rap songs, and they're disrespecting other people or other gangs. For example, in the city of Lakeland, and I don't give the name of the gang, but one street is named for one gang, the very next street over. Now, they, these young, young guys grew up together a block away, but they're in a totally different gang. So at the end of the day, it's all about being cool. Look, look at this picture. That's why when people say, oh, my grandson, he's 15, he's 16, he's just a child. This is what people are seeing in the streets. This is what these kids look like in the streets. And they will kill you graveyard dead. And unfortunately, we have the evidence to prove that. So, but they've got to out-cool each other. So a lot of it is, is social media. That's how they brag. That's how they market. You know, back in the day, we used to fight a, a lot of gang graffiti spray painted on the side of walls. Well, my goodness, it's hot outside. Now they do it online. They've made it real easy for us to keep the neighborhood clean. So that's how a lot of it occurs. And then it gets to be retaliation. Keep in mind, when they disrespected Outsie's grave, this is a 16-year-old kid, a boy. Then the, gang, the shooting started. And then this gang shot, shoots, and this gang retaliates, and this gang shoots. And we're arresting people. But they have no conscious understanding what the rest of their life in prison means. Because despite this gangbanger being shot and killed at a very young age, one of his buddies goes and shoots another one, knowing that we're arresting people and they're disappearing into the system for a very long time. So they're brazen, they're bold, they're immature, they have no understanding of a, of life, that, that a, a life term means a life term, and that's why we're trying to educate on the backside. Let me close with that. We have a GRIP unit. It's called Gang Resistance Intervention Program. And every day we counsel and we mentor these kids in our school system. We have a prolific program to work with these kids at the schools. Now, here's the news that I can't share with you because you can't measure it. You can't measure the absence of an event. So we can show you what shootings occurred. We can show you who we arrested. But we can't show you the dozens and dozens and dozens of kids that didn't get in the gang or got out of the gang or didn't get shot or didn't shoot because we can't measure the absence of, a, of an event. But we can tell you that all of that working together our school system is remarkable. They not only want us there to protect and keep the kids safe, but they want us there to counsel and mentor the kids every day. That's why we have a 50-year low in crime. But it, if you have one kid that shoots one kid, that's unacceptable. So when we get to zero drive-by shootings, zero gang retaliations, and zero kids being shot, and zero kids getting these guns, and they're getting them off of the streets. They can't walk in and buy them. 
then we'll know we're successful. But as long as you have anyone shooting at anyone, it's not acceptable. You know, it's interesting that you say that. First off, you see we're here with the Ministerial Alliance. So we are dealing with our intervention at every level, starting with our ministers and the communities and in in all of our programs are focused. And a, as I explained, the, the question was asked last night, is I know there's got to be gang members other than the, these black kids committing crime. And we see one-offs, but these are the organized, structured people that are local, that are prolific. We see a group of gangbangers show up one weekend at a party here, and they shoot, and we arrest them. But they're not from here, and they don't camp here, and they don't continue their crime sprees here. So we see what we call pop-up crimes. But this is folks from the community. That's why we went to the ministers, or the ministers came to us 18 months ago and said, hey, you know, we, we need to step this up. We need to get everybody together. So we're doing, we're doing mentoring through the schools every day, and that's where all the kids are. When, when these kids aren't in jail, they're in our school system. We are having interventions at the churches, at the communities. We also have our Polk Sheriff Charity, where when we learn of families that don't have food, that don't have clothing, that don't, we take food, clothing to them to help them out, and we mentor and coach along the way. I believe that's why when you look at the overall volume, not only have you seen it decrease, but you've seen a remarkable response to us. Before we made the first gang task force arrest, we took our known, what I call our kid gang bangers, from teenagers through our early 20s, and we went to the mom and daddy's house and we knocked on the doors. We had some mamas and daddies slam the door in the face. We had one mama say, I wish you'd hurry up and arrest him because He'll be alive and safe in the county jail, and he's going to get killed if he keeps running the street doing what he's doing. So I've got, we got the door slammed into our face to the mom when we went there and said, hey, if you don't keep your kids home at night, we're going to arrest them because we'd rather have them arrested than either shot dead or locked up for a very long time for shooting someone. So we had mothers that were of the gangbangers who said, look, you know, I'm five foot tall and 100 pounds. He's six foot three and 230. I can't control him anymore. And we've been making a po positive inroads with all of them. Is there anything that you would ask from community leaders? I know like Hal and Lakeland would like a new building and they've been asking the city commission. Is there anything that the county commission could do for these young men to keep them off the streets? They do. Most cities do a great deal, and Powell and Lakeland is one example of, of, of great work. But if you see something or hear something, say something. That goes for crime. But it also goes for children in need. If you see something or hear something, say something. We will get services and help from the various cities all the way through the county. We have programs. We have help programs. But you know what? Let me just call it like it is. These kids are like that. They don't want help because they're cool, they're in charge, they got their guns, and they're the boss of the streets. But we'll never say never, and we'll always give them the opportunity to mend their evil ways, or we'll help them mend their evil ways. Sheriff, any message for the community? Because I know some of these firearms are stolen out of vehicles. Some of these vehicles... 
firearms were stolen out of vehicles, and some of these firearms were never reported stolen. So some people had their, their guns stolen, and they go, I'm not going to call, and, but I would much rather be on record if I were one of them saying, I don't own that gun anymore, somebody stole it. But we know the vast majority of these guns are stolen. People just don't call and report them to us. But call us, get on the record, let us know a gun's out there, and we can, we can trace that gun if it turns up. Some of these guns, uh, one or two of them were stolen in like California or New Jersey, Texas, that we saw here. So these, these guns travel all across the United States. And we can't do this by ourselves. When I look at uh, Pastor Johnson and Minister Mahoney and our own Joe Hallman, who's Deputy County Manager, we are all working together. And we're working together with the parents that will allow us and parents that will tell us. But make no mistake, the apple didn't fall, fall far from the tree with a lot of these kids. Their mamas and daddies were the generation before them that were mean and didn't want our help. And they're either in jail or prison, or some of them are dead as well. So we're dealing with a finite number of folks that are very dangerous. And if you don't think one of those kids won't shoot you graveyard dead, just look in their eyes and look in the barrel of their gun, and you'll see that they will shoot you. And our officers and deputies are the ones taking those guns away from them and locking them up so that they can't hurt themselves and they can't hurt someone else. If okay. The, if, if the pastor or minister could answer um, what uh, difference you've seen, positive difference that you've seen in the community since um, these people have been taken off the streets and the operations have, have happened. Um, <clears throat> it's been a big difference due to the fact that Polk County Sheriff's Department is doing their job and they're doing it with um, excellence. And when when I see young kids, because I do the prison and jail ministry, I travel to all the prisons around Florida and I travel quite a bit of places. But when I see youth and young kids that are saying, Minister Mahoney, you've come out and talked to me, or I've seen them in prison at Polk Correction or wherever I see them, they're saying, I'm going to go home, I'm going to join me a church because we understand that this man and his deputies don't play the radio. And for that to be said, it makes me feel good as a minister because when I go to the prison to speak to the groups of kids and we're doing water baptism, we're doing a lot of different things in the prison that we wasn't able to do in the past. Now to see kids in prison that are in a uh, faith base and they're getting water baptized and they come home, they're saying they're not going to be a part of the gangs anymore because they know this man will lock you up. And I've seen a lot of kids around from young kids up until 30, 40 years old in prison, in whatever prison they're in right now today, that are saying that when they do get out after 15, 20 years of being locked up by this man, they're going to come home and join the church and do something different from what they did from gangbanging. Yes, ma'am. That there has the, 105 of them were arrested in some of these other operations. We arrested more than 44, but be, 144. We are, we arrested more of them, and we arrested some that are not part of these organized gangs that were caught up in, but they were but they were not documented as being gang members or gang associates. So they don't only run with other gang bangers. They, they have associates, and so when you look at the numbers and you add them together, you know, this number may appear to be different from that number because some of these arrests may not have been in the gang. Sure, the open no, yes, it's open-ended. It, 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 it is not ending. It is, and, and my, my last statement, stand by. There will be more arrests. That this group, these groups were on the east side of the county. We also saw a 64% reduction on the west side of the county as well. And you will see more arrest. But make, make no mistake, 
If you want to commit crime, some of you are going to get away with it for a while, no matter who you are, whether you're in the gang or not. Some of you are going to get away with it for a while. But stand by. We'll get to you. And there are people that will watch the social media and your television station. They don't realize it, but they are going to jail. Because we have zero tolerance for people who shoot at kids. Or shoot at anybody, but especially kids. But when a 15-year-old has a AK-47 Draco-style handgun, that's a scary thing. Okay? Thank you very much. Appreciate it.